the first major theme that I see is the idea of loss. So, uh, what I mean by loss is we lose everything, right? So that means we lose our, our youth, right? our health, family, our friends, our possessions. We suffer, right? Uh, we, um, we experience bad luck. We have bad luck. And then at the end of it all, So now bad luck is that thing which you can't predict and you can't control, right? If you walk out on the streets of Beijing and then you're run over by a taxi, it's something you couldn't predict because if it were, you wouldn't have gone out on the streets of Beijing, right? And you can't control it, right? You have no control over that taxi. So these are all things that happen to all of us. It might not happen today, but they're going to happen at some point. We will lose everything. At some point, you'll no longer be young, you'll no longer be healthy, you won't have all your family members, your friends, or your possessions. You'll suffer at some point. You'll be alone, for example. That would be an example. Right? Of suffering. Uh, you'll have bad luck. It's inevitable. It's going to happen to all of us. Right? And then we all die. Right? This is the diagnosis that's sort of common to all of humanity. What's the treatment for all of these things that uh, make human existence difficult? Well, the treatment is what I call living in the now. So, <clears throat> the way I think of it, I think, well, if all of these things are true and we accept them as being true, what's the only thing guaranteed to us? Do we have any guarantees about the future, about tomorrow, about next year, next week, next month, the next hour? No. So what's the only thing that's certain? If we have no guarantees about the future, what's the only thing that's certain for us? Yeah. Right now. Now is the only certainty way that, that we have, right? So <clears throat> since this is the only certain day that we have, we have to sort of make the most of what that moment is, right? We have to embrace it. We have to live it. So, if you follow this, uh, this treatment, well, what's the state of health that you're going to achieve? Well, I, I sort of describe this as what Nietzsche calls uh, eternal return. Or, uh, say, existential freedom. Now, what Nietzsche, or this idea of Nietzsche's, I call it eternal return, occurs a couple of times throughout his works. Uh, in one of the works, he, he imagines this situation where this all-powerful being comes down to you and says, uh, you know, would you live your life over again, every day of your life, every minute of your life, every year of your life, over again for eternity? In other words, you live every, every year of your life, every day, minute, hour of your life, over again, forever and ever. What would be your answer to that question? Well, it would either be yes or no, right? Nietzsche would hope that you would say yes, right? That you would have that kind of attitude toward your life, right? To say no would mean that uh, you didn't live the life that you wanted, right? Well, that would be a shame because, well, is there another life after this life? We're not certain, right? It's like a bet with the future. It might snow tomorrow. Do we know? No, we don't know, right? It might rain tomorrow. It might be smoggy in Beijing tomorrow, right? We don't know. 
I could wake up tomorrow. Maybe not. A meteor could fall on my apartment and I'd be dead. It could happen. So, <clears throat> Nietzsche would hope that you would have the attitude toward your life that you would live every day of your life over again. If you don't have that attitude, then, then you should change the way you live your life. Right? But this is the, the state of health, I think, that uh, the existentialists kind of want us to achieve in that they, they want us to have this attitude toward our life that, yes, if we had to live every day of our life over again, we would forever. Right? Because we're living the life we want to live. Whether it's good or whether we've had to endure bad luck, we still wouldn't change it. Uh, let's see if we can use these themes, either as they are in the diagnosis, the treatment, or the state of health, to sort of arrange, find patterns in what happens in the story. Because the story is just a series of events. But it's hard to make sense of what those events mean, right? It seems kind of random, arbitrary, meaningless, right? And our task is to find meaning in the text, right? So we have a sort of uh, a way of understanding the text. Now let's apply this, uh, this context and see what meaning we can get from the text. All right, so let's start with this theme of loss, the, diagno the diagnosis part. All right, now what we're trying to find is we're trying to find patterns in the text. See, if you can find a pattern, then you can begin to make sense of what's going on. All right, so where are some examples of loss in uh, The Stranger? What's the first example of loss? That... Mom's dead. Right. There's those, mom dies. Okay, that's the first example of loss. That, that fits in with this, this diagnosis that the, the existentialists give. You know, they'd say, this is something that happens to all of us, right? This is part of what it means to be human. To be human means you're going to lose stuff. And here we have an example at the very beginning of the book. Somebody's losing someone, right? What's another example of the loss? Of the Excuse me? The of the well, let, let's kind of go chronologically. Let's, uh, so, what, all right, so in, in part one, what's another example of loss? Someone, someone losing something. Okay, Salamano loses the dog. What's another example of loss? Remember, because we're looking for this pattern. We want to see that this pattern is there. Then I'm not just making this up. You know, I just didn't invent this, but rather it, it's something that came out of reading uh, existential literature. We want to see that, you know, that this medical analogy is a, is a good tool for interpreting the text. In other words, making sense of what happens in the text. So is there another example of loss in the story? Well, let me help you out. What does Marie Cardona lose? Who's Marie Cardona? Marcel's girlfriend. Uh-huh, she's the girlfriend. So what does she lose when Mar Marcel goes to prison? She loses the boyfriend, right? So Marie loses the boyfriend. Okay, now, when Marcel goes to prison, what does he lose? Well, he loses Marie, right? The boyfriend loses the girlfriend. <laughs> Not only does Marcel lose his girlfriend, but he loses his friends, right? Raymond, Salamano, Celeste, Emmanuel, right? All of the friends that sort of populate his life, he loses them as well. Marcel also loses his freedom, 